G'day guys, thanks for hitting play. I'm Justin Graydon from JG Barbecue and today I'm gonna to show you just how easy it is to cook a five and a half kilo brisket in your Weber kettle using one of our trusty JG Barbecue offset plates. So if you like what you see, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notifications at the end of this clip. So now I'm going to show you how I set up the JG BBQ offset plate for a low and slow cook. First thing we're going to do is we're going to fill that side chamber with as much charcoal as we can fit. Once she's full, we're then going to take out eight briquettes, throw them into a uh, chimney, we're going to get them lit, and once they're fully lit, all lashed over, we're going to put them back into where we took them from. Now we did take them from one end only. By taking them from one end, it allows those coals to burn across the whole length, and that way, if you ever do need to add more fuel for a really long cook, as it's burning across, you can throw some more in behind it and you're gonna get an even longer cook out of it. All right, so once we've got those back in, we're gonna flip the rack back over. You'll see me throw a chunk of cherry down on top of those lit coals and also a chunk of pecan because I'm doing a brisket today and they're my two favorite profiles that I love to run with uh, brisket. Once that's uh, set up over there, um, we can put the lid back on. Now when you put the lid back on, make sure you've got the vent to the opposite side of that side chamber. By doing that, what we're doing is we're forcing that air to be drawn across the meat and that's the best scenario that you could have. So um, that's the setup. Let's get cooking. Okay guys, while that pit's coming to temp, it's time to trim and rub this brisket. Now today I'm cooking a Wagyu brisket sourced locally here in uh, Victoria. Uh, from a little place called Sher Wagyu. It's a great little farm. Um, they have some amazing products. So if you ever do happen to see that Sher Wagyu label, make sure you grab yourself something because you will not regret it, I promise you that. Now, after taking out of the packaging, um, having a good look at it, it actually doesn't need much trimming at all. I'll probably just take just a little bit of this hard fat off here on the edge. That's pretty much it from this top layer. Maybe a little bit here, that's it. Then I'm gonna flip it over, remove any excess fat from the bottom and uh, that's all she needs. So while she's upside down, I'm gonna uh, throw the rubs on, on the back of it and on the edges so that when I flip it over, all I have to do is apply the rub to the top. That's it, she's ready to go. Now today, I'm actually using um, two different rubs. I've got 407 barbecue here. Now, last year I was lucky enough to go to um, Argyle, Texas and go to their restaurant thanks to uh, Dan Arnold. And I'll tell you what, they had some killer food and this rub which they use on their brisket was amazing so I had to bring some home with me. So I'll be using that one along with um, Suckle Buster's Espresso Barbecue. Now this is a, a fairly new one for them. Um, I do enjoy using an espresso kind of rub. It brings a bit of earthiness to it as well. So I reckon these two combos are going to go together really well. Alright so um, we're ready to go. All right guys, it's time to boat. I had a bit of a sneaky look before and uh, checked the internal tent while I was there. That bark's looking mean and she's sitting about 170, so I'm happy, I'm, I'm ready to boat this. Now, when I say boat, what that means is I'm gonna take the brisket out, I'm gonna sit on the foil here that I've got ready in front of me, I'm gonna scrunch up those edges all the way around and then uh, once I've done that, I'm gonna add a little bit of moisture. So to do that, I'm gonna add some beef stock. Now I'm not going to pour it over the top because we don't want to wreck that bark that we've just been working so hard for in the last you know, few hours. So I'm going to pour it down the side and only a small amount uh, because you've got to remember this is, this is a Wagyu product so it's going to render down a lot of fat and it's going to release the, that fat into that liquid. So you don't want to have too much in there that's going to bring it up over the top of the flat because then you're going to ruin your bark. We don't want to do that. So I reckon it's time to get her out and get this happening. All right guys, we are six and a half hours into this cook. It's smelling bloody good out here. And it's time for me to have a look to see how she's feeling doneness wise. So at this end of the cook, we're not going by internal temps anymore. We're purely just going by feel. So when I say that, what I'm looking for is for the probe to basically go in and out with no resistance, like a hot knife going through butter. Now, if she is like that all the way over, great. It's time to come out. So if she is ready to come out, uh, I'm lucky enough to have a cambro, so what I'm going to do is um, put the brisket into a large foil tray, slide her straight into the preheated cambro, 
and that'll keep her warm for as long as I want. Um, today I'm looking for about a one hour rest. Um, if you don't happen to have a Canberra at home, everyone's got an Esky. All you need is an Esky and three towels. Basically, throw a towel down in the bottom, wrap your brisket up in uh, foil across the top if you're boating, wrap it up in a towel, sit that on top of the bottom towel, another towel on top, close that lid, you're good for up to four to five hours like that. So, let's check it out and um, hopefully she's ready for a rest. All right guys, the brisket's been resting for just over an hour now. I'm getting pretty damn hungry, so I wanna get into this. Now, the reason why we do let it rest, it gives it an opportunity for those juices to redistribute through the muscle fibers, which makes for a much more tender product at the end. So, I'm hungry as I said. I'm gonna get into it. Let's see uh, how she looks. Oh yeah, look at that, beautiful. All right, well, uh, I think it's time to cut into this and uh, give it a taste. Well, I guess all that's left to do now is to dig in and give it a go, eh? Let's see how she's come up in the end. Oh, look at that. That thing of beauty. Oh yeah, that's tender. Let's see how she tastes. Wow. Mm. That's damn good. And that's just the flat. That flavor combo of the uh, 470 and the uh, espresso, absolutely banging. Nice crunchy bark. That is beautiful. Well, today I've shown you just how easy it is to cook a brisket in your Weber kettle with one of our offset plates. Now, all in all, that took about, you know, it's a seven hour cook, roughly, uh, hours rest, beautiful. What more could you want? Now, if you have enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also the bell notification if you want to keep up to date with any new videos we release. Um, thanks for watching and uh, how about you tell me what's your go-to flavor combo for your brisket at home? Throw it down in the comments below. I look forward to reading them. Thanks again.